Once upon a time, the Bodhisattva was born as a deer in the prosperous kingdom of Kosala. He was called Nandia, which means delight, and he lived with his parents in a small thicket on this rich and fertile land. Now, Kusala was so well populated with animals and was so fertile with fields full of crops and trees and vegetables everywhere that all the animals roamed freely. But the king of Kosala liked to hunt and every day he used to go trampling over the fields, chasing deer and killing them to take home. After a while, the farmers started to get quite fed up about this. Each day, one of them would find that their field had been trampled on, that the crops were no good, and they had to start again. So they called a meeting. What should we do? They discussed it for a while and then came to a decision. They would cordon off an area of the land known as Angina Forest and make sure it was a very suitable environment for deer to live in. They'd dig out lotus ponds, plant grasses there, keep the trees well maintained and then put fences all around it. Then they would round up all the deer in Kosala and send them to the forest where they could live happily but the king could also hunt them. So they took their proposal to the king and he agreed. And they did everything as they had planned. Once Angina Forest was ready, they went out with planks and weapons and chased up all the deer so that they had to go into the forest to live there. And then they shut the gate. They then went to the thicket where Nandia lived with his parents. And Nandia saw them coming. He realised what was happening and realised he had to act quickly. So he said to his parents, I can see men with planks and weapons and they're coming to chase us out of this thicket and they'll capture us. Now it's very important for your own safety that you just stay quiet here because I'm going to run out. I'm going to be a decoy. And don't worry, I will make sure I'm okay. And then I will also hope that we meet again. So his parents were very upset, but they did not stop him. And he ran out of the thicket and the men with the weapons and the planks saw him and took him to the forest and put him in with the other deer. In this park, this forest park, things were very good. They all had enough to eat and they had plenty of water and space to roam. But every day the king used to come and he used to hunt and every day he took a deer. After a while his parents started to get very worried about Nandia and they met a Brahmin and said, please go to the Angina forest and please give a message to our son we really want him to come home now. Would you ask him to escape so he could come and join us again? And the Brahmin said, yes, I will. So he went to the forest and said, is there a deer here called Nandia? Yes, said Nandia, that's me. He said, I've got a message from your parents. They really want you to go home. Would you go and join them? They've asked you to escape. And Nandia said, I'm terribly sorry, but I wonder if you would give this message back to them. I live very well here and I'm a guest of the king. It would be a bit rude to go now. More importantly, my friends are here. I feel I will be able to help them and I'll be able to protect them. So please send my reassurances to my parents and I very much hope I will see them soon. The Brahmin agreed and went to deliver the message back to the parents. Now the deer were in consternation because they saw that every day one of their number was lost. So they had a meeting and decided to draw lots as to who would go and place themselves in the way of the king's arrow. 
And every day, one deer drew a lot. And every day, that deer would go and place himself where the king was nearby, and he would get shot with an arrow and taken back to the king's palace. One day, sure enough, Nandir's turn came. But he wasn't frightened. He thought this will be a good chance. It may be possible to change the ways of this king. So when the king of Kosala came, he went to the place where the allotted deer always waited, and he saw on the hillside Nandir just standing there. So he prepared his bow and he pulled his arrow and he tried to shoot him. But the thing was, Nandia the deer did not stand in fear or trembling about death. He was not filled with hatred for the king. He was not in a panic and he was not confused. On the contrary, he stood quiet and still experiencing loving kindness for all beings, including the king. So great was his tranquility and the truthfulness of his loving kindness, the king couldn't shoot his bow. He kept on trying, but somehow the arrow wouldn't leave the bow. Eventually, Nandir said to him, why haven't you shot me? I'm waiting for you. And the king said, I just can't. My arrow won't shoot a creature like you. You are so noble and I feel something in you which is excellent. It would not be right for me to kill you. No, said Nandia. It would not be right to kill me. And it was not right to kill the other deer either. I'd like you now to try and cultivate these qualities yourself. Don't kill other beings. Don't steal. Don't indulge in bad activities. Be a good king. You're out hunting every day. Look after your kingdom. Treat your subjects well. The king was moved and he said, I will do that, sir. And so he put away his bows and arrows and he went back to the palace and he took Nandir's advice. He focused on his people and looked after them well. And throughout the city, he had a golden drum beaten. And this proclamation was made. From now on, no deer will be hunted in the kingdom of Kosala. Set all the deer free. May all the birds in this kingdom, and all the fish, and even the cats, May they all walk freely or fly freely. May they swim freely. May they all live in their own environment. And may this kingdom flourish and continue to be wealthy and prosperous. And so it was. And the deer returned to the fields and the places where they knew well. And everybody in the kingdom was happy. This story is about the power of loving kindness and how it can overcome obstacles. And in this case, Nandia the deer did overcome the obstacles that were placed in his way. He didn't even have to use arguments. It was just something about his kindness that was so clear to the king that he couldn't kill anymore. <laughs>